Hi everybody. I hope everyone is enjoying their time at home and hopefully learning how to cook. Now, bringing us up to date, there seems to be a flour issue in the grocery stores. King Arthur, where I live, is almost non-existent. Actually, gold metal bleached flour is about all there is, if you can even find that, and then 25 pounds of bleached out flour. I'm not fond of it, so I thought what a perfect time to have a sourdough along. Let's all make some sourdough. You know, we're kind of going back to the basics. The starter, this particular starter, takes five days to get going and then another couple days to actually make the bread. But I thought this is a perfect time. Now what I want to do is do three different kinds because everybody's got different kinds of flour. Since flour is an issue, I ended up when my local store had zero zip, not even a grain of anything on the shelf, I bought some wheat berries because I do have a stone mill. So I thought, okay, we're going to solve this issue. Then I went online to Palouse Brand and bought some because my uh, a grower that I wanted to buy from in Colorado was completely out. So I went to Palouse. It took close to two weeks for the wheat berries. I ordered two 25 pound bags, one of a soft, white wheat which is uh, going to be an all-purpose flour and then a hard red spring wheat which will be closer to a bread flour or a strong flour. Having said that, I was able to find, nobody kind of knew what to do with them, thank God, goodness, is some wheat berries at the local store. And then after going through some of my wonderful books, Peter Reinhardt's, I'll link to all this stuff at the, at the bottom of the video. Having said that, um, he likes to start with make a sourdough starter with some rye flour for added flavor. And this is the recipe I'm using. It's Peter Reinhardt's uh, uh, The Baker's Apprentice book. And I thought then after the rye flour, I'm going to do three different kinds. We'll do some where I put some wheat berries through the mill. And then we'll do some to compare with, this will be the end of my King Arthur bread flour. I was in the store yesterday, nothing. But we'll just see out of comparison what it does. I don't honestly think that bleached flour is going to have the same outcome as any of these flours. But anyway, this is a fairly straightforward, simple recipe to get, get it started. Now he does like to use pineapple juice. Got something to do with the bacteria and the acids. If you don't have it, you could use lemon juice or orange juice, and that's only for two days. And then you're gonna add water and flour to keep it going. But having said that, so I thought, no, let's just start with the pineapple juice. I wanna make it pretty true to form, and we'll just see what happens. So now, this is where a scale comes in really handy. I'm going to measure out four and a quarter ounces of the rye flour Actually, I'm going to do this in the bowl so we can mix it first. Put that on. We're going to tear it. All right, so we're going to go four and a quarter, which is the equivalent of a cup of flour. I really like a scale because it's a little bit more precise, and it's actually faster in the long run. And then to that, we're going to add four ounces of of pineapple juice. This is just dull pineapple juice. I couldn't find any organic pineapple juice. If you have a choice for what you'll need for this, the organic's the way to go, but there wasn't any in the store. So that's this has to be dull. And we're gonna put four ounces of that in. I could have teared this, but I can add, so we'll just go to eight and a quarter. And then we're going to mix this in the bowl to form a soft dough. Now I already have some labels made with the three different kinds on and we're going to label and date these just in case we have snow coming tonight Oh, if the power goes out and I get busy doing whatever you do when the power goes out um, at least I'll know where I am as far as the timeline's concerned. So now that we have a little bit, and I like to mash this in because you want to make sure that the 
flower is completely hydrated. Now, in reading his book, the reason he likes the rye flower is because your finished result of whatever kind of bread you want to make with this, and there's so many variations, it's ridiculous, will have a bit more flavor. So that is what we're going to be comparing. Now, you want to put this into a four cup or one quart container. I prefer glass, but I didn't have any wide mouth. Um, like mason jars or anything that I could was easily accessible so I'm gonna put it in this container we're gonna flatten it out so that I can see where it's going we're gonna put the lid on it and I'm going to label this with Bob's rye so that we know that this is the rye starter and then I am going to draw a line at, I'm going to draw a line on where this, the dough comes up to so that we can tell where, if it's doubled, tripled, single, or it didn't do anything at all. So the rye is done. Now what we're going to do is I'm going to do the bread flour tear that out again and we're going to go to four and a quarter and then we'll be able to see it'll be interesting to see at the end of this five days you know which is looking better and which has a wonderful smell to it for pineapple juice take that to eight and a quarter okay now, the same with this, we'll mix this to form a little dough ball. Now, a lot of people have been asking me, where are you finding your flour? Well, you know, I'm actually not. So that is why I ordered the wheat berries. And you might take a look. I am so happy that I bought this stone mill. I got it from Pleasant Hill uh, they sell all sorts of mills. I'll put the link on the bottom. The Como mills are really good mills. They're still, they're wonderful. I love them. I like the wood on it too. They're a little pricey. However, the maker of this also has made one called the Mock Mill. It's quite a bit less expensive and it's a really good mill. I know a lot of the restaurants, he was promoting it for quite a bit of time, and a lot of the restaurants were using it. Having said that, you might take a look because I have a feeling that this is going to get a lot of use, plus the benefit of just having fresh milled bread that you can do your, or fresh milled flour that you can do your own fast and easy. All right, so here's the King Arthur bread flour. That looks like that got a nice mix on it. And again, I'm going to lid this and I'm going to mark the top of it so we know where that's going. Okay, now I'm going to label this King Arthur Bread Flour. Put that on the front. Now for the mill. I've already weighed out the four and a quarter ounces of berries and you can see the four and a quarter ounces is not quite a cup because it doesn't have it's not aerated from going through the mill so having said that I'm gonna put my mill on very fine and I'm gonna turn it on you always want to turn it on first follow the manufacturer's instructions but you do if you put the berry into the mill first the stones will jam tried that didn't work so in the Okay, so you can see it's a nice fine flour. I'm not going to sift out any of the bran. I'm going to leave that in. And it's a little loud, but get used to it. It's fine. It's really a nice, I just love the stone mill. 
And having said that, now we're going to put in four ounces of pineapple juice. And we're going to mix this up. All right, so the pineapple juice is in here. Now I'm making sure that that whole wheat flour, which truly is whole wheat, is evenly and completely hydrated. Okay, so now that looks good. Cute little dough ball. And that has now become a starter. So, we'll push this down in the bottom, cover it up, and label it Bob's Wheat Berry. And draw a line where it is. And I'm going to put today's date on it. So, I know when we started this. All right, we'll come back. Then tomorrow, we're going to add a little bit more to it. A little more pineapple juice and the same flowers again. So, till tomorrow, we'll see you then.